Hello and welcome back to another episode of Showcase. I don't have a joke for the beginning of this one, or joke, quote-unquote, because what I have been doing for the past ones hasn't, hasn't been jokes in any way, shape, or form. Anyway, this is a different, uh, well, a bit of a different showcase compared to the, the normal ones that I do. Usually these are scripted in some way, shape, or form, but my, my idea for the series is that it's just kind of a, kind of an anything goes sort of thing. So there's not really like a set way that it's going to go about. It'll probably normally just be the, the scripting things, but I want to make it clear that stuff like this will probably happen every now and then, if not pretty regularly. Uh, maybe every couple episodes will just be one of these unscripted rambling ones. I don't know. But this one is kind of just based off a video that I was supposed to do months ago. Apparently tagging is still a thing on YouTube, and I got uh, tagged to do a most nostalgic games sort of thing, and I forgot to do it. I recorded it, but I never recorded footage, and I never edited it. I actually probably still have the file on my computer somewhere, but I'm doing- I'm essentially doing it right now, but I'm changing it up a little bit, and going specifically with nostalgic PS2 games. This is just gonna be a showcase of games I played on the PS2 that are nostalgic to me personally. I played the PS2 a lot as a kid, it was- uh, aside from the Super Nintendo, uh, it was kind of my main system. Mainly, it became my main system because my Super Nintendo got given away, I don't even remember why. We just got rid of it one day, but oh well. Uh, but I, I have a lot of gaming memories with the PS2. Uh, a lot of just strange games in general. I already I already talked about George of the Jungle and the Search for the Secret. Uh, that was a pretty uh, a kind of nostalgic one, but I already talked about that one, so that's not going to be on here. The first game I have though is uh, is a licensed game. It's Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I don't know why I gravitated to this Harry Potter game in particular when I was a kid, because when I started playing it, I hadn't seen the book, or I hadn't, I hadn't seen the book, yeah. I just look at the books. I hadn't read the book, and I hadn't seen the movie, but I just kind of decided uh, to buy it one day, and I played it way too much. I distinctly remember a day I came home from school, it was like a Friday, I don't remember every detail of my life, but it was probably a Friday, considering. But I came home from school... Uh, did whatever homework I had to do then and just like played it for six hours straight I don't even know how I managed to do that because going back to record it for this video. It's bad It's a really bad game like it's functional. It's not really a buggy game at all It's mechanics work and credit where credit is due its mechanics for like casting spells are kind of cool Basically the way you do different spells is kind of is a context sensitive sort of thing but also has to do with how you move the right analog stick. So it's, it is a really cool way of casting the spells. Problem is, it's just uh, the gameplay is boring. It's a lot of run around to this place and talk to this person, usually. A lot of the interesting stuff that happens within Order of the Phoenix is really only relegated to cutscenes. A lot of it is running back and forth from place to place. Basically, it's like Bully, well, well, the the best way I could describe it anyway would be if it was like Bully, except take away all the missions in Bully, like the the actual interesting parts of the game, and just make the whole game going to class every now and then, walking back and forth. And you still technically have those missions there in the game, but all of the all of the stuff in Bully that was inter that was cool, like invading the the nerd's fortress or whatever wh whatever it was uh, near the end of the game. Uh, that's all a cutscene. You don't actually play it. I remember when I beat the game as a kid, I was confused that I had beaten it, because you don't even run into Voldemort at any point. Like, when you're actually controlling Harry, it's all in a cutscene. Everything's a, Everything interesting is a cutscene. The stuff you're actually controlling is just walking back and forth. You could just watch the movie. Like, just watch the movie, really. That's essentially what you're doing. It's like watching the movie except you're getting Harry from place to place. However, playing it, still playing it and recording footage, I did have a, a pretty decent amount of fun, despite how bad the game actually is. But I can guarantee you a lot of that is just nostalgia. Although one thing that's actually entertaining is the dialogue. It's really weird sometimes. Like, some of it makes sense, but then others it's just really, really weird. Although one thing that is kind of irritating, or, or by, by, car yeah, by kind of, I mean ungodly insanely irritating when you have an objective when you need to go somewhere and you're not doing it one of the characters will remind you to go do that 
And it's like, even if you're on your way there, they'll be like, oh, let's go do this thing. Which gets extremely irritating if it's something halfway across the map. So like, re like really early on in the game, one of the first things you have to do is go to the Defense Against the Dark Arts class. Because of course you do. The thrilling gameplay of going to class. When you're told to do that, you're a pretty decent distance away from where the classroom is located on the game's map. So even walking, like, even if your direct path is to there, and that's the only thing you do, all the way there, you're going to have Ron and Hermione telling you, we should really get to class, just over and over again, and you'll get sick of it, fast. I know I did. But yeah, it's, Order of the Phoenix is a bad game, but it's got a lot of nostalgia for me, and I still enjoy it to an extent, despite its many, 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 many flaws. Uh, next, there's a game I have actually talked about before. Uh, but that was way, way long time ago, and it's a uh, way outdated and shitty video that I might redo at some point just because of it. But it's Destroy All Humans 2! Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, this is my favorite open-world game of all time. Still is. I absolutely love it to death. And I hope that Nordic Games actually, you know, fucking does something with the license they've had for the last five years. But they haven't really done anything with THQ properties outside of Darksiders. And that's just been releasing uh, remakes and shit. Or rather, definitive edition ports and stuff. But that's that's not the point here. The, the point here is that Destroy All Humans 2 is an awesome game. A lot of the nostalgia for this one is... It's one of the few games as a kid that I rarely... Like, I didn't really play alone a lot. Most of the time when I played games as a kid, I just kind of played them by myself. Because I didn't own a lot of multiplayer games. And the ones I did own, I... Uh, Always, I've been cursed just kind of to live in the middle of nowhere, not immediately in the vicinity of other people. So it's inconvenient for me to actually meet up with other people and actually play a game with them. And especially when I was a kid, when I had no way of getting around. But uh, this is one of the few games I actually did play with other people pretty regularly. Because I got lucky uh, one time, and when I moved for the, for the first time, I, I, I moved to a house that was just down the road. Uh, from my cousin's house. And so pretty regularly on uh, weekends and then just uh, especially during the summer break, I would go over to his house, bring my PS2, and we would play Destroy All Humans 2 and it's co-op. I don't have any co-op footage because I don't have friends, but it was fun. It's like, you know when you, uh, when you play a game with a friend and something is... Like, things are just inherently funnier... Like, you could play a game on your own and something is not, not like, not incredibly funny, but then if you play it with your friend, that exact same thing can just be, like, gut-bustingly funny. And that's kind of Destroy All Humans 2 in a nutshell. Playing the game alone, it's... Things that happen in the game outside of, like, the writing aren't particularly funny. Like, hitting, shooting a guy with a dislocator and he goes flying across the map. Like, that's entertaining, but it's not necessarily something that's hilarious. But playing that uh, with, with a friend, that is the funniest damn thing you'll ever see in your life. And I couldn't even tell you what it is about it. It's just inherently really, really funny. The other Destroyer Humans games are pretty good, except for Big Willy Unleashed. It's it, it, like, Big Willy Unleashed is awful. Because they released that one on the Wii, like, really early on in the Wii's life cycle, so they had to shoehorn motion controls in there. So not only does the, like, the Wiimote pointing it at the sensor. Not only does that aim your guns, but it also aims the camera, so it makes it really awkward and just kind of a pain in the ass to play. But Destroy All Humans 1, Destroy All Humans 2, and Path of the Furon are pretty good. Path of the Furon gets a lot of shit for reasons I can't quite figure out. I've beat, I've played through Path of the Furon like three or four times, and I still don't know why people hate it so much. It's a really good game. On just like a technical level, it is a better game than Destroy All Humans 2. But Destroy All Humans 2 is a lot more fun. But outside of the gameplay, the thing that I really, really love about Destroy All Humans 2 is the dialogue. The dialogue is hilarious. There's, I don't remember if this was in uh, Destroy All Humans 1, but in uh, 2, there's like a prank call sort of thing in place. Actually, I think it might have been just Destroy All Humans 2, because you need to be able to, you need to like body snatch a police officer or like a, a legal official kind of thing, and I don't think you could body snatch in the first game. But uh, if you... Uh, have body snatched a police officer you can uh, go up to one of the payphones and call the police dispatch and do one of the generic uh, prank calls like is your refrigerator running and usually because they are different from the regular generic prank calls 
They're pretty funny. They're not the greatest jokes in the world, but they're entertaining enough. Especially thanks to the, the delivery of Crypto's voice actor. I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but he's basically doing a Jack Nicholson kind of kind of thing, and he does a great job. It's like the only voice for Crypto, and I hope they try to get him back if Nordic makes a new Destroy All Humans game. <laughs> yeah, Destroy All Humans 2 still stands as my favorite open world game of all time. That's enough of the, that's enough Destroy All Humans though. Next, there's a game that I think just about everybody has played and probably has some amount of nostalgia for. Star Wars Battlefront 2, and feast your eyes on the cringy name that I gave my profile, uh, like 10 years ago, that I'm too lazy to change. But, uh, li like a lot of people, I fucking love Battlefront 2. It's still, I think it still probably is my favorite Star Wars game. There have been technically better ones that have come out since then, but Battlefront 2 is still the one that I enjoy the most. And much as I gave the new Battlefield credit for actually being good, because I thought it was good, it's not as good as the others. It's good on its own merits, but it is not Battlefront 2 in any way. And I'm gonna uh, be, I'm gonna beat the dead horse here, I guess, and say that one of the things that Battlefront, the new one, was really missing was the space battles from, uh, from 2. And they did give us Spider Squadron, which is sort of a replacement, and it's fun as well. But I just liked having, like, being able to destroy, to take down an entire enemy cruiser. And you can't really, you can't do that in, in, uh, in Battlefront. You can take down the frigates, but that's not quite the same thing. And even outside of the space combat, the, the ground combat in Battlefront 2 is just super good. You can obviously tell that, you know, when I'm not scripted, I'm not the best at explaining my opinions. It's, I've, I've, shown, I've shown this before in, uh, in other videos. But mainly a lot of my unscripted videos, like this one, are just me saying how good or bad something is without going into exact details, because I don't have time to think things out. But Battlefront 2, I, I spent a lot of time playing Battlefront 2 when I was a kid. Uh, probably more than any other game, honestly. If I, if I had a way to, to go through and know how many hours I played every game I've ever played, Battlefront 2 probably holds the most amount of hours for me just because of how much I played it as a kid and never managed to finish it until about three or four years ago. <laughs> Battlefront 1 was also pretty good, but I don't have uh, a lot of nostalgia for that one because I didn't play it uh, very much. I rented it from Hollywood Video one time, and that was about it. But Battlefront 2 I've been playing for years. I was playing it on uh, PC for a while, but my computer just decided to tell me to go fuck myself, and I can't. it doesn't run it anymore for some reason. So I am basically only play the PS2 version now, which is good, but the, P the PC version, this is like one of the only times I'll say this, the PC version is definitively better. If you can play Battlefront 2 on PC, do it, because it's a better game on there. Yeah, I but I feel like a lot of stuff about Battlefront 2 just kind of goes without saying. Everybody knows it's a great game. You know it's a great game. Your grandmother knows it's a great game. Everybody knows. So I won't do any more, any more gushing about it, because it's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> And then for the for the final game, well, I, uh, for my nostalgia, my own nostalgia trip, there's Hulk. You know, the one based off the Ang Lee movie. This is actually a game that I hated a lot as a kid, because this first level that I'm showing you right now, this is when I was a kid. This is the only level I could ever really beat, because there was a thing. There's a thing on the second in the second stage with like uh, these these password things that I'm probably showing right now. For some reason, when I was a kid, I could never grasp how to do these, even though it's super simple. But when I was a kid, I just could never figure it out. So I never really got past the first level. And so I, I hated the game a lot, but I still played it a lot, or rather, I played this first stage a lot. And it still is a, a pretty fun introduction stage. But like, like Harry Potter, this game's not very good. It's one of the better licensed games, honestly, but it's not amazing. Yeah, I haven't played really any other Hulk game, so it's the best one. I it's the best Hulk game I've played. But if what I've heard about uh, what was it Ultimate Destruction, I think on the 360, if what I've heard about that game is accurate, it's way better. But it it does have its own. It does have its like set of positives. Its art style, I think, is actually a, a pretty good. In the cutscenes, it's super ugly, and the character models are not good. Even for that, even for like that era, the character models in the cutscenes aren't good. But in game, it actually looks surprisingly decent. But when it's it's kind of main problems is, are just how 
really, really boring. It is the environments are super uninteresting, and this and this really came to light in like the I think it's like the fourth or fifth stage. There's no reason to fight anything, unless it's kind of like other M in that unless there's unless the only way to move on is to defeat all the enemies in an arena. There's no reason to beat any of them. There's a level in the sewer, it's like the third or fourth stage, something like that, where you keep getting into these small enclosed rooms, and, you know, military keep uh, military soldiers keep showing up. You don't need to fight any of them, aside from a few rooms, because most of them you can bust the doors down and just leave and move on. So it just kind of makes it boring when you can quite literally walk through everything. Even still, I kind of... Uh, was compelled to play more of it as I, as I was going back to record footage for this video. But af after a while, I just kind of got bored and gave up. It's not one- it's like, it's not horrible, and I still enjoy it to an extent because of nostalgia. So I if you're curious, give it a shot, but it's- it's not great. The voice acting is super weird, too. Like, they gave- they gave David Banner- or Bruce Banner, rather. They gave him this really weird kind of brooding, almost Bruce Bane- uh, Bruce Bane. That's his name. Almost Bruce Wayne kind of voice that doesn't really fit him in any way, shape, or form. My entire life, infected by this disease, I'm going after the cure. Although what made the dialogue infinitely more interesting on my end, my copy is, I guess, fucked, and a lot of the dialogue skips. So people repeat themselves and they sound like they're crazy. Yeah, that's that's about all I really have to say when it comes to, to nostalgic PS2 games. I might do other nostalgic lists, because I played a lot of games on the GameCube as well when I was a kid, but a lot of my time was spent on the PS2. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I don't know how often I'll do these uh, unscripted showcases. It all kind of feels a little clunky, and the recording is going on for a little, uh, little long. Depending on the length of the video and how it ultimately flows, and I guess how people feel about it, uh, there might be more of these more often, or there might never be another one. But if you enjoyed this video, I've got a bunch of others that you can watch. In fact, I'm showing two of them right now. On the left, you'll find the last video I did, which was a showcase on Kamen Rider themes, because I can't talk enough about Japanese bug men. And on the right is another showcase about Crush 40 songs that aren't from the Sonic games. There's one technically related to Sonic on there, but it wasn't from a game, so I counted it. Crush 40, like, their stuff outside of uh, of Sonic doesn't get a lot of recognition, so I did that video to, to bring attention to more of it. But if you enjoyed this video in, in particular, you can subscribe to know when I make the next video. Uh, don't know when I'll do it. Hopefully we'll be soon, because I have a schedule, sort of, again. Not like a set I release on in this amount of time, but I have, you know, a consistent release window, anyway. But that's going to be it for now, and I will see you guys next time.